Hello Internet, welcome back to the Data Science Community. Today we'll be deploying your first predictive analytic model as a web service. What I'll be showing today will work for any predictive model, but if you don't have a predictive model, go ahead and watch our two previous videos where we'll show you how to set up a model and then optimize that model. So here I have an optimized predictive model that's ready to be deployed. And this model predicts whether or not someone would have survived the Titanic given their age, gender, cabin class, fare price, etc, etc. Before you deploy, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a copy of your experiment. Since it's good practice not to tamper with your web service once it's been deployed or else your users might end up pinging a broken API, which could disrupt your flow of business. And also, you can continue working and optimizing your model using the original experiment. So to save a copy of your model, you want to go down to Save As, click on that button. So Save As, right now this is called Titanic Model Dash Experiment. And I'm going to call this one Titanic Model Deployed Web Service. And I just want to check this box. And now you will notice that it automatically switches you over to the new experiment that you just copied. And remember, this isn't actually deployed yet. This is what we're naming it to differentiate it from the original experiment. So a bit of an explanation as to how the predictions are made. So you made a crystal ball, which is a composition of your algorithm and the algorithm being trained and fine tuned. And the prediction itself is actually happening in the score model module. So if you will notice that the score module on the left input node takes in a trained model and it's going to use that trained model and its algorithm to predict whatever is going to be inputted on the right hand side. So the right hand side takes in a data set and using that data set it's going to use the trained model's algorithm to give a prediction. And the prediction is actually spat out in the score data set. So if you visualize the score data set output node, you notice that it took the input data that you've put in and then it appended two extra columns to it, the score probabilities and the score labels. And this is actually where the predictions are actually occurring. So for example, a female that's 25 years old in second class actually has an 89% chance of survival and because of our 50% threshold it rounds it up and likewise it predicted that a male of 20 years old in the third class would only have a 26% chance of survival and it rounds it down and says no this person would probably not survive the Titanic. So we want to set up our web API to behave exactly the same way. We want it to take in these attributes as input parameters when we ping our web service. Our trained predictive model will then make a prediction given those attributes and spit out a prediction or a score probability as a return value. And this is where we set up the inputs and outputs of our API. So whatever in API we call, we want the parameters to be sent into the right input node of the score module. Once it's inside the module, it's going to use the data from the training module and the decision jungle algorithm that we've developed to give a prediction. And that prediction is actually going to be spat out into the output score module. So to specify the inputs of our API parameters, we actually want to right click on that node that we want to be the input. In this case, it's the score module's right input node, and you want to set it as a published input. So now when you make an API call, the data inside the parameter is actually going to be sent into this node. Once it gets into that node, you actually want uh, an output port. So you want to set the output port of the score module as the set publish output. So this is the response that you're going to get once you have that, a successful API call. After you set the ports, you can actually run your model again and you will notice that a publish web service button is now available to be clicked. You can actually publish your web service right now and it will actually work. But I'm going to continue further and show you some best practices and clean up our model a little bit further. The first thing we have to address is that our algorithm is not static, it is ever changing. So if at any point, if anything above here changes, the algorithm could potentially be retrained. We don't want that, right? Because we actually spent a little bit of energy into optimizing our, our model. So we don't want it to change. So what you have to do is you have to extract your trained model and save it as a trained model. So what you want to do is you want to right click on the output node of the trained module and you want to save it as a trained model. And then you want to save it and just rename it what you want. So and this will be called Titanic Predictor. And then you want to click OK. It will then extract your model. You can tell it's done extracting your model by this green check mark on the bottom left hand corner of your screen that will then appear. Uh, your trained model that you saved will actually appear on this menu on the left hand side called Trained Models. So this is where the, all your trained models are kept. Go ahead and drag in the extracted model and just reroute it to your score module. So your score module wants a trained model. And now that your score module is actually reading directly from a static save trained model, you actually don't need these algorithms up here. So you can remove that. We also don't need to evaluate our model any further. So we can just go ahead and get rid of this evaluate model module. And we actually don't need this split any longer because the only reason we had withhold data in the first place was so we can validate and evaluate our model. The last thing our model actually needs is a schema. 
And what that means is that we specified where the inputs are going to go in once someone makes an API call to our web service. However, we never specified what those parameters are going to be. Are they going to be a bunch of ints, a bunch of strings, how many variables are they going to accept in? And simply put, it's going to take the schema of our fully processed data. So this is how we want the parameters to go. We want it to accept categorical versions of sex, accommodation class, and embarked. We want it to take numerical values of age, sibling, spouse, parent, and fair. But we don't want it to take in survive because that's what it's trying to predict. So we actually need to remove this column before we can publish our API. And if you will notice, the last module we had actually casted response into survive. Since we were trying to remove the response class altogether, let's actually just remove this module. So the last module we have is the missing values scrubber, where we removed the last two rows. So let's actually go forward and project our columns and remove survive using the project columns uh, module. So you want to drag in your last of your process data. You want to launch the column selector. You want all columns to go forward, except you want to exclude survive. So you just check that box right there. Okay, so project columns now with survive removed actually has the correct schema that we want our score parameter API to actually start predicting. And don't worry, I know we're feeding data into the score model right now, but once you make an API call, the data actually goes directly into here. It actually bypasses everything up above. However, the API will require the same parameters, the same parameter types and class types that, are, that you specified in the project call. Okay, now let's run our model. When the model's done running, you will notice that a publish web service button will now be available to be clicked. So go ahead and click on that. And do you want to publish your web service? Yes. Checkbox that. And once that's done loading, it'll take you to this screen. This is the web deployment screen. So right now your web service is deployed and you can see this test button over here. So now we're going to test our web service. So go ahead and click the test button and check it out. This looks familiar, right? This is the schema that we were able to pass in earlier. And let's just test this real quick. So I would be third class. I am a male. I'm 24 years old. I would bring my wife. I don't have any kids or children. I would pay $20 for a fare. I would leave from port C. So I'm going to check this OK. And then it's going to start running. And now it's making the prediction. And when that's done running, you can go ahead and check uh, on the bottom right hand corner. The green feed will notice that you have a notice. So click on that and then click on the details. And once you're in the details, it will tell you that given the parameters I gave, a 24-year-old male, I would have a 40% chance of survival, and it would round that down to zero. So I would not survive the Titanic disaster. And let's just test this again, and keeping everything the same, except this time I'll be female. And check it out. Uh, being Just by changing my sex to female, I've increased my chances of survival by 11%, and it actually casted at me as, yes, I would survive, but barely. Remember, 51%. Barely rounds it up. Well, that concludes our video tutorial on how to deploy your uh, first predictive model as a web service. And congratulations, you've published your first web service. So join us next time where I will show you how to adapt our code to ping your API and get a response externally outside of Azure ML. If you like what you just saw, subscribe to our channel or leave us a comment. Let us know if there's a topic you want us to cover and be sure to check us out at datasciencedojo.com. Until next time.